Jesus' name we pray. A divine Father, we thank you because of the exhortation you have called us to give to us. It is a privilege to be recognized by you and to have your confidence upon us. It is a matter of joy that you believe in us that we can bring praise and glory to your name on the earth. Thank you, Father. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Our prayer is we will not disappoint you. Amen. The ball is at our court. We will not waste it. Amen. We will not play with this opportunity. Amen. Thank you Father. Be with us and help us to score. For your glory. In Jesus name we pray. We can be seated. Somebody sent me this text this morning. I've not called back to know who sent it. But it just went uh, perfectly along with the message God has given to me to share with us it went good morning sir hope all is well sir I still perceive the revival of Nigeria depends largely on your ministry that means your immediate pastors have to sacrifice and preach with fire even as the national program approaches be sure of our prayers and weepings before the Lord for his outpouring through you to all of us Greet our beloved sister Linda. Thanks. And he puts his name there. Timothy. I've not called back to know who sent this message. But I feel to, to let you know about it. So you can know what people think about us about you about me i'm talking to you on the lord has chosen you to work for him the lord has chosen you to work for him We shall see it as we go on. In the days of Noah, we, um, in the days of Noah, wickedness swallowed up all men except Noah's family, made up of himself, his wife children and their wives it came to a time that the lord regretted creating men on the earth because of the passion of evil and wickedness they engaged themselves in the passion they engaged themselves in evil and wickedness with passion 
in Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 the Bible says and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and it repented the law that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart he was sorry to have met man this puts it in human understanding that as you can be sorry as a man for doing something for giving birth to a child because of the wickedness of that child you can be sorry as a man for marrying a woman because of the stubbornness of that woman. You can be sorry as a woman too for marrying a man because of the wickedness of the man. At a moment, you could be like that although the man can change tomorrow the woman can change tomorrow the child can change tomorrow but now momentarily by the acts of that person i regret so god regretted creating man that moment but praise god with time he had people to rejoice upon among human beings hallelujah so it grieved him at his heart it pained him at his heart what pains god is wickedness evil when people do evil against one another it pains him disturbs him if god has a pastor who is doing evil to members it disturbs him it pains him if he ever chose that man to be a pastor he regrets it now the evil of the man makes him to feel sorry i regretted appointing this man to be a pastor that is how it is now verse 7 and the lord said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that i have made them it repented me that i have made them i will kill everything because man has prayed his wickedness even to animals i will i am sorry to have made them yes verse 8 but noah found grace in the eyes of the lord while there are people that are bringing pain to god there are people that are comforting his heart. I, I choose to be on the side of people that are comforting the heart of the creator God. I am not and will not want to be in the side of people that give grief to God. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the lord these are the generations of noah noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and noah worked with god 
Noah was a just man and perfect. So, it is not the power of Satan that is bringing this wickedness to the world. That is bringing wickedness to mankind. No, it's the choice of the men. It is not because Satan has more power, more wisdom than God. No. If you see decay in a system, it's not because of Satan. Satan can also be walking, but it is really not because of him. Somebody invited Satan. Somebody needed the cooperation of Satan to carry out the evil and wickedness. And Satan helped him. Satan is an, is an instrument. It's like any other helpful material. You want to go to Lagos. You, you boarded a vehicle. The vehicle has sent you there. Was the vehicle the cause of your going to Lagos? No. You made up your mind. You want to travel abroad. The plane assisted you by hastening you there. Did you come abroad because of the plane? No. If you had not wanted, if you had not released yourself to it, if you had not gone to buy the ticket, if you had not gone to the airport, you would have remained at home. So that is how it is with Satan too. You wanted him, that's where he came. You needed his cooperation, that's where he came. You danced the way of his, his side, the way to his side. That's where he could pick you. So, Noah was just and perfect when all others were wicked and evil. Noah chose righteousness. The psalmist said, I have chosen the way of truth. I have chosen the way of truth. The way of righteousness. The choice is yours to make. Verse 10. And Noah begot three sons. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The eighth also was corrupt before God. And the eighth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. It's normal of God to destroy the evil ones. It, it is normal. In the then world, he destroyed the evil one with water. Physically. But now, he has reserved eternal destruction for human souls in the lake of fire. Even now, in the world where we are, God's judgment still goes against the wicked people. Any time, anyone that he considers his cup full, he judges in various ways. So, and we read verse 14. Make thee, in, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shall thou make in the ark. And shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be, shall be 300 cubits. The breadth of it 50 cubits. And the height of it 30 cubits. The height of it 30 cubits. A window shall thou make 
to the ark and in a cubit shall thou finish it above and the door of the ark shall thou sit in the side thereof with lower second and third stories shall thou make it and behold i even i do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die but with thee will i establish my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. So, you can see that God considers the righteous. That's why when the problem, uh, when problem was to arise against this country, against Christianity in this country, I know God will not allow it. For our sake, for the sake of the righteous, he will spare our lives. That is it. God does not play with righteousness. He will spare your life. And through you, he will save others. Through Paul, all those that sailed with him in the ship were spared. Two hundred and how many? Seventy souls. Just because of Paul. So, our nation is enjoying safety because of the righteous that are living in it amen in chapter 7 verse 1 and the lord said unto noah come down and all thy house into the ark for thee have i seen righteous before me in this generation can you see come to safety Come to salvation. Come, in, come into my protection. Why I have seen you righteous in this generation. And through you, I'm making a covenant. I'm making a covenant with you that through you, a new world will be established. I'm destroying the old world of humanity and vegetation and animals i will be establishing the new one through you for your righteousness because i have seen you righteous in this generation we see that this place in our day the world has gone corrupt churches have gone corrupt ministers of the gospel have gone corrupt judgment is determined upon this world the lord jesus is soon descending for the rapture but the church is unprepared for him completely corruption everywhere the churches and they by their training they are not focused on god they are not having jesus in focus by their training their pastors are not teaching them about jesus yes so they are following after the wind they are look they are taught about maximizing the benefit of life Man, maximizing the, the, the profit the world can give them that's where the mind is not heaven heaven is no more the goal 
of the churches and the preachers of the gospel. No. Freedom. Liberty from Satan, from a poverty, from what? And the Satan they want to get liberty from, they don't know the way of liberty. They go in and, and go in and inner into Satan's hands. So that's what is going on. And this is true. We are seeing this wickedness everywhere. We are seeing this thing which the devil is doing everywhere. We look at the churches. We see that they have gone. And we say, yes, we are in the days of Noah. And God is regretting. Christ himself is regretting for his sacrifice for the church. For the world. Where are the people he died for? He is crying. He is revealing the picture of his suffering to various persons. Don't you consider me? He is revealing the, the suffering cries to many preachers. Won't you preach me? Are you not going to tell the world about me? see me suffering here and you're eating the fat you're fattening yourselves the lord is weeping because of the state of the church hence he has raised up this movement to revive the people of god to true Christianity the Christianity of righteousness and holiness and reach out to the world with the message of truth the gospel of truth the gospel of salvation and eternal life through Jesus Christ we should go to the world with the gospel of heaven not the earth not inheriting the earth the gospel that directs our hearts to heaven he said let not your heart be troubled you believe in god believe also in me for in my father's house are many mansions i go to prepare a place for you and when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And take you to be with me. That where I am, there you may be also. This is the gospel. That the believers should think of heaven. Wait for God coming from heaven. But this is now absent. In the, in the gospel, many preachers are preaching. God has raised up this movement to return to the original gospel that calls sinners to repentance and believers to holiness. Now, he, has, he is doing a new thing. He said, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. This is even God comforting himself. What is the new thing? I am raising up a new ministry that will return Turn to the original gospel. I am raising up a new, a new kind of ministers that will preach the original gospel that will bring sinners to salvation 
and believers to holiness and prepare the church for the rapture and it is in this vision that he has called you and say come i will send you with the true gospel i will put my sp spirit in you and give you the power to preach the true gospel i will put my true word in your mouth you will know my word you will know me so that you can go with the true gospel so the lord has chosen you to walk for him in this way he raised up holiness revival movement for this purpose he raised it up for this purpose that he will empower this movement to preach his word amen. amen and this is true to speak of revelation paul says let us come to revelation if i will speak of revelation let me tell you this we were somewhere in a program in the eastern part of this country and we worshipped the lord there we praised him we preached him we blessed him we preached righteousness and holiness we brought believers to holiness to serve the lord in holiness in one of these times we were praising and worshiping the lord in the church there and one of us got a revelation and the lord jesus was jubilating he said my plan has worked my vision has worked my father had told me go and rapture the church however few let them come and close the chapter but i pleaded with him and say i have a vision i want to raise up a movement in time holiness movement let me watch this movement and see what they will do then you can rapture the church and my father said okay go and do and i brought about holiness revival movement i have met it <laughs> yes it is working praise the lord you can see the joy of the lord we're speaking of revelation now and this is a true revelation we're speaking of revelation and so the lord has chosen you to work for him he brought you to this movement as a leader and a preacher a, and a worker for this true gospel so as to return men to himself and prepare them for his coming he came to this movement and raised you up in this movement for himself for this purpose yes he raised you up in this movement for this purpose to use you to bring the true gospel to humanity and bring the message of righteousness and holiness to the church so that he can reap souls for heaven as for the churches they have gone corrupt as for the ministers they have gone to make affinity with the devil their thoughts are not for genuine salvation deceit is everywhere carnality strive competition worldliness 
demonism, call it what, has taken over them. He's now on you. The Lord has chosen you to walk for him. Now, you then, you could wonder, who am I? Ask that question, really. Because Moses asked that question. He asked God that question. He said, who am I? Who am I? That I can go to Pharaoh. Ask that question because you say, but I am a child. Jeremiah said so. He was a child. And yet, the Lord says, I will send you. I will put my word in your mouth. Ask yourself a question. I am an ignorant man. Amos said so. He said, I am a keeper of, uh, I am a gatherer of sacomo fruits. How can I become a prophet? Leave that to God. But all together, the Lord has chosen you. That he might use you. To go forth and bring people to, his, to himself in this end time. Look at it in the book of Acts of Apostles. Chapter 22 verse 12 to verse 16 verse 12 to verse 16 and one Ananias a devout man according to the law having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there came unto me and stood and said unto me brother Saul receive thy side and the same hour I looked up upon him and he said the God of our fathers had chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will And see that just one. And should just hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness. Unto all men. Of what thou hast seen and heard. Can you see that? This man came to Paul. Who was then called Saul and said, Receive your side. The God of our fathers had chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will, he will make you to know his will. And see that just one. He will make you to understand Jesus. And should you hear the voice of his mouth. He will make you to know his word. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men. Of what thou hast seen and heard. The purpose of the choice. You will make all men. Know his will. You will take, you'll be a witness to all men concerning this gospel. So, take it seriously. You are a chosen person. Verse 16. And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins calling on the name of the Lord. 
Wash away your sins. Don't give attention to sin in your life. Make sure sin does not land on you. Why? You are the chosen of God. God has chosen you for a purpose to bring men to him so that they will know Jesus and be saved. God has chosen you for this purpose to cause the church to know his world of righteousness and holiness. Therefore, don't allow sin in your life. Get sin washed away. Do this work for God and not for man. The choice is by God. God was the one that called you. Was the one that made the choice. There can be human choice. And human choice could be wrong. We saw it in Samuel. When the Lord directed him to where he could pick a king for himself. He, when he went there among the sons of Jesse and saw Eliab, he thought he had found a king. This is the Lord's anointed. And the Lord said no. Until he discovered that among all those children standing before him, none of them was the choice of God. The choice of God was still in the forest, in the wilderness, taking care of sheep. Human beings can make mistakes in choice. But in your own case, God did the choosing. You know yourself. You will know yourself whether human beings brought you here or God brought you here. Human circumstances created this way for you or divine God created this way for you. You know yourself. And so it is you I am talking to that God has chosen you. Amen? Amen? It is you I'm talking. God has chosen you. And that this choice is of God. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 15 to 18. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 15 to 18. The Bible tells us there that the choice is of God. So, the walk you are to walk, walk for God. You're not walking for man. Verse 15. So, I took the chief of your fathers, wise men and none. And made them heads over you. Captains over thousands. And captains over hundreds. And captains over fifties. And captains over tens. And officers among your tribes. And I charged your judges at that time. Saying, hear the causes between your brethren. And judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. And I commanded you at that time all the things which ye should do. The judgment is God's. This walk 
you are working for God. That's what God wants you to know. So, as you do this work, therefore, do not respect persons. It will destroy this work and make you like one of these corrupt leaders that God is regretting calling them. When you begin to respect persons, yes, do justice. Do ju justly. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man. For others failed because they were afraid of man. Don't fear the government. Don't fear religious people. Don't fear the rich man. Don't pity the poor man. This gospel is not your own. It is God's. For these other people began to pity the poor. And so, felt the full commandment would be too strong for them, will increase their misery. And so they never told them. Told them. These people respected the rich and felt the full commandment will make them frown and turn away like the young rich man. And so, they never taught them, they never told them the true gospel. But you, who is chosen in this new, new kind of ministers, among to be among them, don't do what your fathers did. Don't do what your elder ones did and corrupted this gospel. And turned the church off that nobody knew the truth under them. Don't do that. The gospel is hard. For the judgment is God's. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me and I will hear it. Seek counsel if you are not clear. Seek counsel. And as you are told, go and do it. As you know the truth, in case there's anything not clear unto you, go to higher people with higher understanding. Let them teach you. Come to your leader. Let your leader teach you. Listen to all the messages preached. They are on tapes. They are on books. Read them. You will get the courses. You will get answers to some difficult courses. And go and present them as they are. Don't excuse man. Don't pity man. Your elders pitied man and are now suffering wrath. Some of them are in hell already now. They are suffering the wrath of God. The Bible said, Take it unto thyself. And unto the gospel. Continue in it. For, for in so doing. Ye shall both save thyself. And them that hear thee. If you pity man. And not stand fully to this work. You will not save yourself. Inasmuch as you are not giving the real salvation to man. Neither will you have it you will not have your own. So, that is what the scripture says. In the book of 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, I read chapter 19, verse 4 to 11. 2 Chronicles 19, Verse 4 to 11. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem. And he went out again through the people from Beersheba.
to Mount Ephraim and brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. And he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed what ye do. For ye judge not for man, but for the Lord, who is with you in the judgment. Take heed what you do in your pastoral work. Take heed what you do in the zone you operate. Take heed what you do in the chapter where you operate. Take heed. For the work is not for man. In case you sit down there and begin to complain over those who are your leaders, how they are failing, and you begin to murmur and grumble, he said, The judgment is the Lord's. The work is not man's. It is the Lord who is there with you in that town. Who is there examining you in that city? Even in your house, in your private room, the Lord is there. Even in your mind and in your heart, examining your thoughts. So be careful. Are you working for man? Even if man abandons you, has God also abandoned you? That's the question. If man is not taking care of you, does God not really take care of you? If it fails to come from headquarters and it comes from another angle, is it not from the same God? Be careful. Be careful. For he said, Take ye what ye do be careful for the judge for ye judge not for man you're not preaching for man you're not ruling over those people for man not for the international director who is a man but for the lord jehovah the everlasting God who is with you the rewarder the comforter he comforts you when things are dry he comforts you when things are not okay he comforts you he encourages you he's with you because you're doing this thing for him Wherefore, now, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Respect God. Don't eat the money there. Respect God. Don't lust after the women there. Respect God. Don't lay stumbling block up over the men there. Respect God. Don't go into evil business there respect God don't create carnal create anything invent evil out of sensual wisdom respect God don't begin to save the money God's money respect God don't begin to convince people that this tithe paid to the church but you can pay tithe to me as a person to just as a person because you want to get money fear the Lord Fear the Lord. Don't say, you know, you can give me this car as my personal own uh, instead of church. Fear God. This work you're not doing for man. When Jesus did his own, what was his reward upon the earth? That you are busy looking for reward. Was he not looking on God to reward him? 
Why are you using wisdom of evil? You are not aware that God is there in that working place with you. Be careful whatever you are saying to any man. He said, fear God. Wherefore, now, lay the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take it and do it. Don't plan how to live this walk. Do it. Don't reduce the walk. So don't try to give up. Because of any reason. Don't. He said, see, take it, do it. For there's no iniquity with the Lord our God. Will God fail you? Will God abandon you? No. There's no iniquity with the Lord our God. Therefore, don't introduce iniquity into his work. Don't introduce iniquity don't do the work with iniquity don't allow the people to see you doing iniquity and you say you are a servant of god there's no iniquity with the lord our god yes that is what he the lord is telling us no respect of persons who is greater than God? That God will be respecting him and bowing down his word before that person. Who is greater than God? And this thing is not man. It's God. God has sent you. Who are you respecting and keeping the truth from? When the Lord told Joseph the dreams of the two people in the prison one person would be saved another person would be hanged did he tell them it was god the lord has spoken who can but speak who can but speak why are you avoiding the hard word from people from a person didn't that word come from the lord then you won't be a true minister. I said, this is what your fathers did and spoiled this thing and go regretted calling them. This is what your elder ministers did and failed God. They were respecting persons and reserving the world. And they failed and the church failed and many had turned to hell. Don't follow their steps. There's no respect of person with God. No taking of gifts. <laughs> Is it not because you want to deal softly with that man so you can be getting gifts? You want to deal softly with that woman so you can be getting gifts? The leprosy of Naaman. The sin of that man that you are sparing shall catch up with you forever because you are respecting him and hiding the truth of God's word do you know that you are doing damage to his life have you told him the truth and he ran away have you told him the truth and he did not believe is there no grace in truth didn't Jesus come with grace and truth? Why are you depriving people of the grace of God? Will not the grace of God be sufficient for them? Then why are you hiding them of truth? I mean, why are you hiding the truth of them, from them? Don't do those things. These corrupt ministers did. And brought regret to the heart of God for I he repented me of appointing them don't do that moreover in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat say of the Levites and of the priests and of the chief 
of the fathers of Israel for the judgment of the Lord and for controversies when they returned to Jerusalem and he charged them saying thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord faithfully and with a perfect heart judge among your brethren don't be so fast to condemn don't be so fast to justify seek the truth of the matter take the time required to bring out the truth even the judges of the air spend five years in a case sometimes ten to arrive at the truth although some it may be because of the sinfulness in the judges but to you if your work is of God let the Holy Spirit determine when that case should be over by when the truth has come the case of marital restitution why are you so hasty to conclude it I just want to show the woman that she's free don't do damage to your life don't do damage to another man do you know that if you fail in that case many people are going to hell he that hasten it with his feet seen it you have not made full investigation and you want to justify you have not made full investigation and you want to condemn what are you hasty for do you value the souls of the people is your soul more valuable than their own if you do this thing and be condemning people sending them to hell is it you that will be free therefore judge righteous judgment bring out the true state of the matter if a man offends against you against the church or there comes up a dream or comes up an allegation be diligent about it careful thoughtful trace every step trace every step show clearly let the Lord show clearly let the Lord conf confer with the Lord inquire from the Lord to know the truth don't act by yourself make sure if you're not clear take counsel if you're not clear take counsel the causes that are too hard for thee bring to me don't rush over them and kill people don't bring pride into it i know i know i know i know what does he know that i don't know god said it god will give him your leader things that you don't know Hurimo is a non-denominational ministry given to the propagation of God's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, conferences, and the production and spread of holiness literature and materials. Pastor Paul Ricke has been mandated to raise up this great work as the international director, an anointed teacher of holiness with divine inspiration. He is the author of over 30 Christian books and many hundreds of recorded messages that can be found on the YouTube channel. Connect with us on YouTube and Facebook. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide Horimo is promoting biblical truth, righteousness, and holiness. Please join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time with the Zoom meeting ID 425-964-7780 or every Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time ID 989-988-2681. To hear the undiluted word of God from Pastor Paul Ricker, the International Director of Horimo. The address of Horimo North America is 3776 Piney Mountain Road, Walnut Cove, North Carolina, 27052. You can telephone us on 336-251-4626 or email us at horimona at gmail.com. You can also visit the website at www.horimona.org.
Welcome to Holiness Revival Movement, promoting holiness and righteousness worldwide.